good evening everybody meeting again with the homeopathic philosophy we have started discussing about the kent's philosophy in yesterday's session and we have just gone through the introduction part of the kent's philosophy and we have started reading the first chapter that is the seek in fact kent was the person who has who is the who has worked out hanemanian principles and he has gone forward than the hanem he no, never just followed the path but he followed each and everything and he has developed homeopathy in his own way and that's why he has made the things in a different simplified manner and tried to explain the core of it and that's why kent's philosophy is one of the important philosophy one must and one must learn when he wants to to practice the homeopathy we have started discussing about the chapter the seek and in the introductory part of this chapter the seek we have learned that differentiation between the old school that is the allopathy and homeopathy allopathy was having It doesn't have any specific principles where it differs from the homeopathy, where the which is based totally upon the seven cardinal principles of homeopathy, and those cardinal principles gives homeopathy a unique aspect because of which it is possible that we we don't have to take opinion. We have to just follow the path. We have to just follow the principles. whole allopathic system of medicine is based upon the concept of opinions theories their own thoughts their own concepts but there is no specific principle on basis of which the whole modern science is and this is the differentiation between these two pathies homeopathy considers the whole aspect of the human life the dynamic as well as material as compared the allopathic science which com considers only the material aspects of the human being and that's why there are many many a times they don't have answers to the causes of diseases whereas in homeopathy we have we know exactly the causes of diseases which are hidden in the dynamic aspects of the human life because we take into consideration the dynamic aspect of the human life and this is the differentiation with which he starts with this chapter and then he turns towards the first aphorism we were up to that level so what he says the first paragraph of organon will be understood by the by an inexperienced observer to mean one thing and that and by the true and experienced homeopath to mean another so he writes the first aphorism the physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to heal to cure as it is done it looks very simple to read this aphorism we we feel what is there in this one sentence if we start understanding the meaning of each and every word which hanuman have utilized while writing this first aphorism if we start understanding it takes me for a month to explain the first aphorism daily one lecture one hours and i used to explain whole aphorism and it revolves around whole homeopathy it has that much of depth and that's why what kings consider he has written full chapter of 8 to 10 pages on this first aphorism and not only on first aphorism only on the two words from the first aphorism the seek so what he says no controversy will arise from the superficial reading of this statement and until hanuman seed and meaning of the word sick is fully brought to view the position of any school will ascend ascend manje sammati dena ek matane sammati dena so if you look towards this sentence superficially it doesn't have meaning it looks very simple but once you start understanding hanuman seed and meaning of the word the seed then you will start understanding exactly what hanuman wants to say about the seed 
the idea that one person will entertain as the meaning of the word seek will be different at times from that which another will entertain. From the modern point of view, from the allopathic point of view, the seek means it is the patient who is having some disease and that that disease is his sickness. From homeopathic point of view, when we look toward that patient, we consider that patient is sick. We never consider just a disorder or disease. We consider the patient is sick. So long as it remains a matter of opinion, there will be differences of opinion. Therefore, the homeopaths must abandon the mere expression of opinion. Allopathy rests on the individual opinion. And homeopathy, allopath says that the science of medicine is based on consensus of opinion. But that is an unworthy and unstable foundation of science of curing the sick. There is a vast difference in understanding the concepts in homeopathy and allopathy. Homeopathy, we have fixed foundation. We have cardinal principle. Because of which, we can prescribe to any patient on the basis of those seven cardinal principles and we can we are sure about remedy because we, we know the path. As compared, the allopathic system of medicine never have any specific um, principle. So there are many opinions. Their seniority matters a lot. What is the opinion of the seniors? That matters a lot. They look towards that thing. They understand what is what is what is his opinion. And that opinion word, animal, the Kent says, it doesn't have any meaning. It is unworthy. Unworthy means ayogya. What he says, allopathy rests on individual opinion and allopathy says that the science of medicine is based upon consensus of opinion. Consensus of opinion, there, there are many people who used to make their own thoughts and then one concept is considered this is right and that is what the on the basis of which allopathy rests. So it is never based on the experimentation. Yes, this is the experimentation, this is the result, and that this is the this result is found to prove every time, and this is science. It is not like that. It is just what I feel. Then there is a meeting of 100 people. Then if 70 of them accept this concept, it will be considered, yes, this concept is the right concept. After some days, Someone comes with new idea, again there will be meeting. They say, yes, your opinion is right. The previous opinion now will not follow. This is how the allopathy works. Still, it becomes a modern. Still, it is called as modern science. Why it is so? It is so because, because the way they study, we never study. The difference lies in the study. We never give that much of time to our own pathy. We never give too much time to learn the um, anatomy, the physiology, the pathology, the medicine, the surgery, the gynecology. If we learn them by heart, we have a right to say anything. Because we, are, we, we know the things properly. But we lack at that level. And that's why they rules with us. Actually, the thing should happen vice versa. But it never happens. It will never be possible to establish a rational system of therapeutics until we reason from the facts as they are and not as they sometimes appear. So if we want to make a rational system, it should be based upon the facts. It should be based upon the experimentation. The facts should remain persistent. Then we can build a rational system. It is not sometimes it's happened like that. Sometimes it happens in a different manner. Sometimes it happens in third different manner. Then it doesn't work. That never makes, we cannot make a system over there. Allopathy cannot make a system because there is no fixed foundation. Facts as they appear are expressed in the opinions of men, but facts as they are are facts and truths from which the doctrines are evolved and formulated, which will interpret or unlock the kingdoms of nature in the realm of sickness or health. So when, whatever the facts are there, and if you observe the facts again and again, and if you get, yes, these are the facts which are real enough, 
they are appearing like that. They give you exactly the same thing again and again. Then it has a meaning. Those facts gives you the laws. Those facts gives you the doctrine. Those facts gives you a detailed understanding about it. And this is what the with which the system is built. Homeopathy is based upon facts. It is based upon experimentation. Hanuman, while reading the Kalins Madhra Medica, observed that fact, experimented when he knows it is correct. Then he experimented for six years and then he defined, yes, after six years, this is the law of symptoms. Not on day one he has explained the law of symptoms. Therefore, be aware of opinion of men in science. So you should not, you should be aware about the opinion of the others, what he says. And this is too important. Because opinion is his own thought. Opinion is not the science. Hanuman has given us principles which we have, we can study and advance upon. It is law that governs the world and not the matters of opinion or hypothesis. Hanuman has given us a law. They have, he has given us principles on the basis of which we understand homeopathy. And this is the difference. Our homeopathy never depends upon the opinions or hypothesis. We must begin by having respect for law for we have no starting point unless we base our propositions in law. See, this is again very important thing which he has explained. We must have a respect for our law. We should follow that law properly. And if we follow it properly, then definitely we will we'll have definitely a success. There is nothing like that opinion over there. So long as we recognize main statements, we are in state of change for men and hypothesis change. If we are dependent upon the opinions, those will going to change. But if we are dependent upon our laws, which are fixed, then nothing will change. Let us acknowledge the authority. And this is what the Hanuman have developed. The principles and authority is the principle. The true homeopath, when he speaks of the sick, knows that knows who it is that is sick, whereas the allopath does not know. The sentence which has meaning. What he says? True homeopath, when he speaks of the sick, he knows who is that who it is sick. Whereas allopath does not know. Homeopath knows that the man, the principle inside the human being is sick. It is not his body. It is not just his mind, it is the principle which is sick. And that's what he explains over there. Whereas allopath doesn't know. He finds it out sickness in the parts. He finds it out sickness in the tissues. He finds it out sickness in the cells. But there is something prior to it. What is that prior? Is the vital principle, the vital energy, where the sickness lies. The latter things, latter means allopath. The latter things that the house which the man lives in, which is being torn down, expresses all there is of sickness. In other words, that the tissue changes, which are only the results of disease, are all there is of the sick man. So allopath considers the sickness over there in the form of changes in the cells, changes in the tissues, alterations in the cells, alterations in the tissues, deformities which develop, and to which they label by the name of sickness. But actually, sickness never lies over there. Sickness is prior to it. And that's why he has in bracket written, which are only the results of disease. So tissue change, cellular change is only the result of the disease. Disease is prior to it. The homeopath observes wonderful changes resulting from potentized medicine. And being compelled to reflect, he sees that crude drug cannot heal the sick. And that what changes do effect are not real, but only apparent. If you understand where the disease is, then you have to treat that disease at that level. If you don't understand, if you just say, yes, this finger is having the gangrene, this, and because of which the person is diseased, your thought will be, just remove the finger, that's all. Patient will be healthy. This is the thought of allopathy. Because they look towards that gangrene, they consider it's local disease. They treat that gangrene with the help of the amputation. 
but gangrene never gets cured because because you have not cured the prior disease because of which the person has gangrene homeopath never prescribes like that homeopath never looks towards that gangrene just as a disease he considers gangrene as a product of the disease result of the disease there is something prior which is there inside the human being which is not visible which is at the dynamic plane at the level of dynamics and which gets disturbed, to which we label by the name of a disease, then that disease is expressing through signs and symptoms. We take into consideration that language of the vital force, language of the nature, and with which we find it out exactly the symptomatology. So if patient comes with a gangrene, there, he says, doctor, there is severe burning in my finger, and the only thing with which I feel better that I used to keep that in the hot water. Now gangrene, we don't prescribe for the gangrene. We are prescribing for the, that patient. And what he is indicating, what, what remedy he is indicating, he is giving you something which is very essential where the, you, your prescription depends where you find the individuality of that individual, where you find it out exactly the human being. Remedy is arsenic, yes, Anita, very correct. Because, because it is the burning better by hot application is the arsenic. It is not gangrene we are treating. We are treating that human being who is having his own characteristic. He is burning better by warm application. So our remedy never depends upon the pathology. Our remedy depends upon the symptomatology which expresses the individual behind that. So homeopath observes wonderful changes resulting from potent as medicine and being compelled to reflect he sees the crude drugs. He sees that crude drug cannot heal the sick and that what changes they do effect are not real but only apparent. So whatever the allopaths used to use the allopathic medicine, material medicine, the dynamic disorders never gets cured. Whatever they feel better is temporary. It is apparent. Apparent means just verbal, so, which is visible. Modern physiology has no vital doctrine in its teaching and therefore no basis work, work upon. No basis to work upon. The doctrine of vital force is not admitted by teachers of physiology. And therefore, the homeopath sees that true physiology is not a thought for without the vital force, without the simple substance, without the internal as well as the external, there can be no cause and no relation between cause and effect. So what he says, when we learn the physiology, we learn only the physical physiology. We learn only the cells. We start with cells. We understand the sense, functions of cells. We understand the constituents of cells, then their functions. But when you are understand we, what is prior to that cell, if we go on finding it out, a human being, the human is made up of the systems. The systems are made up of the organs. Organs are made up of the cells. Their cells are made up of the nucleus. The nucleus is made up of the nucleolus. Nucleolus is made up of the DNA and RNA strands. And that DNA and RNA strands are made up of the amino acids, nitrates, etc., which comes from the nucleus. If we give these amino acids, can we make a cell? Can we prepare a cell? Can we prepare a tissue? Can we prepare an organ? No. Then what is prior to it, which is giving the existence of the cell, to which we label by the name of cell, that is vital principle, which liberates the energy, which is autocratic, automatic, which reflects the vital force. So that should be there, without which you cannot consider the existence of a cell. And this is not included in the physiology. And because of which, the physiology has a limitation. When we talk about the physiology, it has very big limitation. It reaches to the level of cell, but nothing more than that. We have to consider be prior to that. And prior to that is something invisible, something dynamic, 
but which exist, which we have to consider on the basis of cause and effects. And then and then we think about the dynamics. Dynamic is always based upon the two important things. On one side, there is cause. On another side, there is effect. Then in between medium, to which we label by certain name, cause called as a dynamic entity. For example, on one hand, you have a magnet. On another hand, you have a iron rod. And in between medium, when that iron rod gets attracted to the magnet, we never see in between medium, but still we call it science. Tells, gives the name, it has a magnetic energy. In the similar manner, when we think about the human being, we have to think about this vital principle. We have to think about the vital energy. We have to think about the soul. These are very essential things. Vital principle and soul, they are one and same, which we have to take into consideration on the basis of existence of the human being. Once that is lost, it is just a body. It is there because of which I am talking to you. And this is too important, which give exactly the understanding of vital principle. And what Kent says, it should be included in physiology. Once you start understanding this vital energy, vital principle, then you have answers to all your questions. Till you never un understand this, you don't have answers to you. What he further says, now what is meant by the sea? It is a man that is sick and to be restored to health, not his body, not the tissue. See what he says is very correct. It is the man who, who is sick and you have to treat that man, not his body, not his tissue. You will find many people who will say, I am sick. This is a common answer. What has happened? Doctor, I am not feeling well. What is the I? He is not telling my hand is not feeling well. He says, I am feeling weak. Ill. I means that is man. That is the principle, vital principle inside man. They will enumerate pages of symptoms, pages of sufferings. They look sick, but they will tell. They tell you, I have been to the most eminent physicians. I have had my chest examined. I have been to the neurologist. I have been to the cardiac specialist and have had my heart examined. The eye specialist has examined my eyes. I have been to the gynecologist and they have examined my uterus, says the woman. I have been physically examined from head to foot and they tell me, I am not sick, I have no disease. So, if you are allopath, you never find it out the sickness because you measure it in the form of cell, in the form of changes in the cells or tissue. And if you don't find it out, you never believe on the patient that he is sick. He is telling you, I am sick. But still you are not, you are in doubt because you don't, never find it out anything. Many a time I have I heard this story from after getting three or four pages of symptoms. He had many symptoms. Patient has many symptoms. But still nothing is found abnormal. They label you are not sick. What does it mean? It is true that if that it is true if that state progresses, there will be evidence of disease. That is evidences which the pathologist may discover by his physical examination. It takes long time to develop evidence. Changes happens early. Changes happens at the functional level first. There is a law of biological development. Lots of now kind law of biological development. It is of three words. Functions creates organs. Only three words are there. Functions creates organs. Means what? When a fertilized egg develops from the sperms and the, from the ovum, the fertilized egg develops, it is a one cell to which now we label by the name of stem cell. And then st that stem cells, once the vital principle enters inside, then it has an animation, then it starts further dividing, then it multiplies, then functions are defined. The functions are defined first. 
for certain cells, it has been labeled. Now it has been given, yes, you work like a brain. Another group of cells to which it has been labeled, now you work as a GI system. To the third one, it has been labeled, now you work as an extremity. Few cells, the functions are given, you work as a heart. And then they start changing in their aspects. So the nervous tissues will develop or cells develop in a different manner. The cardiac cells develop in a different manner. The muscles develop in a different manner. GI system develops in a different manner. So first functions are defined and from which organism develops. This is called as law of biological development. This law of biological development is first important entity. And in the similar manner, the way the human develops, in the similar manner, his disease develops. It is not immediately a cell will going to change. First, the functions get affected. So patients it comes to you, I am having headache, you examine, nothing found abnormal, but still he explains, I am having very severe left-sided headache. It starts from over here and it goes backwards and it's severe, so throbbing. I cannot open eyes. I cannot look towards the um, uh, light. Even sound also, it, it is associated with palpitation. He's giving you exactly the symptomatology. Allopath examining, he examines his eyes, everything found normal. He do his scan, nothing is abnormal, everything. And then he labels that you are normal, nothing problem. Just take this um, tranquilizer. And it never works. He gives the material medicine. This is a dynamic. It persists for years together with allopaths. And then, the when after two years, he was re-examined and do his MRI. Then he found there is a cyst over there in his in his eyes in the on the back side. Now this pathology is developed after two years, but if this fellow comes to the homeopath on day one with this symptomatology, what you are going to prescribe? Because it is not that we are going to prescribe for his pathology. We are going to prescribe for man who is expressing his symptomatology. So what is the remedy? Remedy is very clear. It is the spigelia, which will which have typical headache, which is orbital headache, supraorbital headache, with severe throbbing associated with palpitation, neuralgic pains, going from up, from front to back, back to front, very typical spigelia headache. And if that patient had, have been treated by this uh, homeopath, patient would have been cured. No further development of the disease happens and no further pathology will, would have developed the patient might have cured at that level. And this is the difference between the allopath and homeopath. They go on finding it out. Is there any fault at the cellular level? And they, when they don't get it, they say there is no treatment. You are normal. So what is it? What does it mean? It is true if that state progresses, there will be evidence of disease. They, that is evidence which the pathologist may discover by his physical examination. But at present, the patient is not sick, says the learned doctor. But what do all these symptoms mean? I do not sleep at night. I have pains, aches. My bowels do not move. So this is how the disease develops. This is develops first at the functional level and gradually it goes on increase. Gradually it goes on affecting the cells and tissue. It takes long period. The law of biological development works over there also. And that's why we should not say he is not having disease. We have to understand his sickness through signs and symptoms. Because the disease has happened at the dynamic plane. It takes long time to reflect in the physical level. And then and then only the pathology develops. So pathology is the end product. It is not the disease. Disease is prior at the dynamic plane. And only language with which we recognize disease is the signs and symptoms or totality of disease. We'll stop over here and we'll continue with it on the Monday. Tomorrow there will be no lecture as it is Saturday and Sunday, so holidays are there. We'll have directly on Monday the next further things. And it 
philosophy, yes, we have to go with this speed. It takes a long time. Once concepts are clear, then it becomes rather speed will be increased. But to clear first the thoughts, it is too much necessary. So thank you being there. Uh, many people, many senior people are also there to attend this lecture. Thanks a lot. And let us spread this message of learning the homeopathic philosophy to all your friends and students also, so that they, they will get. Because what I have observed that in colleges, the subject is there, but it has been not taught. My suggestion is that you know, this old literature written by these people, Kent, Close, Robert, is a wonderful work done by them. It should reach to each and every student of homeopathy, eager-minded student of homeopathy, so that once they learn it by heart, then they will now never have a problem in their practice. Their thoughts will be cleared. And once thoughts are cleared, the concept is cleared, the treatment becomes very simple. And this is what I want to say. So thank you being there every day and be there so that you learn a lot of things in the homeopathy. And we'll meet again on the Monday with further part of the aphorism. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Any queries there we'll have. We have four minutes. So we'll conclude. Thank you.